Welcome to this webinar from SQL Maestros, SQL Server Performance Tuning Made Simple. And you will look at the title because it says part one and part two. So this webinar part one was delivered last week where we discussed a few things and I showed a basic demo as well. And then I promised that I will be back with part two where I will show uh, one level advanced from part one, which is which is like one step further because part one was more conceptual. We were trying to understand what do you really need to do with performance tuning and how do you simplify this complex subject? And so we did a lot of PPT stuff and then a short demo. And then I promised that, okay, now we will do a slightly advanced demo and we'll go deeper, but use the same troubleshooting methodology to troubleshoot, let's say, a slow running query or something like that. And that is uh, why we are here today with part two. And then when I was building the content for part two, I was designing the demo for part two. I thought, okay, at uh, maybe in weeks to come, we will also do part three, which is taking it even one uh, one step further. And we never know how it, it turns out to be. If the feedback is good, we will do part four, part five and whatnot. All right. So first things first, friends, uh, housekeeping uh, questions which is uh, what about part one and part two? Are these being recorded? Yes, these webinars are recorded and they are available on sqlmaestros.com. From the menu bar, you can figure out the link and you can uh, navigate to the page where all the webinars are available. Many webinars are free, others are nominally priced. The part one, the first version part one is freely available. So I am not sure if it has already been set up by the team, but if even if it is not set up uh, as of today's uh, webinar, maybe next few days you will see that online. So you can watch part one freely. Uh, part two, whether it will be free or will it have some cost to it will be decided over the weekend. But either way, you can become a premium member and access all our webinars and all our advanced tutorials. Okay. Before we jump over to part two, the content of part two, what I've designed, what I've planned for today, I will do a quick recap of part one. Can I have some show of hands? How many of you want just a very quick recap of part one so that you really understand the content and the demo of part two? How many of you want a quick recap of part one? If I see a lot of yes, then probably I'll do. Okay, I'm just looking at the... Sending. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot of yes. Okay. That's good enough. You can hold on. Thank you so much. Can, okay. We can stop the responses in the chat window. Can I ask another question? How many of you, is there anyone in the audience here who attended part one? Can you put that down in the chat window? Is there anyone in the audience who attended part one? Okay. Couple of you. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, good. So yeah, those who attended part one, uh, it will just be a very quick recap for you. So don't think that it's a waste of your time. It's always good to get a, a recap and then, you know, we'll move into part two. Okay, friends, let's get started. SQL Server Performance Tuning made simple. First, let's do a quick recap of part one. And this is going to be really quick. What I talked about in part one, that SQL Server Performance Tuning, you know, the problems that you face with SQL Server Performance can be generally categorized as follows. You could say SQL Server is generally slow. This is general slowness, or it could be categorized like high resource utilization, CPU consumption, memory consumption, IO stats, they are all going very high. SQL Server is low on resources. It could also be categorized as excessive locking, blocking, and maybe the application is seeing a lot of deadlocks. That's another way of looking at performance issues. And the best of all, which is slow running query, slow running workloads. And this is just for the sake of discussion. This is no formal categories or list. And when you are categorizing these performance issues, sometimes one type of issue is caused by another. For example, the general slowness in SQL Server may be caused by high resource utilization. So for whatever reason, uh, CPU, is low uh, CPU uh, SQL Server sees high CPU consumption, uh, high memory consumption, and that leads uh, to the overall engine kind of running slow. Uh, slow running query could be a result of excessive locking as well. Think about it. 
the business user sends a report, uh, a request to the server, and for whatever reason that request is being logged, the application user will not understand whether my query, my my request is being logged uh, or is being blocked by another process, another user. But you as a SQL Server professional would know that. For the business user, it will be like, oh, my query is running slow. Oh, SQL Server is running slow. Now, the slow running thing, the slow running query, which is the most common thing we hear day in, day out that the query is running slow, could be a result of a lot of different problems like bad T-SQL, missing indexes, etc. Uh, high resource utilization could be a result of rogue workloads, etc. Uh, excessive locking, blocking uh, may be a result of poor application design. Sometimes we follow certain best practices and we can minimize that. So that is just an overall picture of what we really see as SQL Server performance issues. Now, so we you identify the symptoms, we diagnose it, and find out the solution. We keep it one, we want to keep it very, very simple. That's the whole idea of this webinar and the content. That is, it's a complex subject. How can you simplify it? Just figure, look at the symptoms, start diagnosing it. Symptoms, the one that I talked about in the previous slide, because each type of problem may have a different course of action. If it is a slow running query, you take a different course of action. If it is general slowness, you take a different course of action, which is where the diagnosis is important because then you have different set of tools that you are playing with. And once you identify the root cause, you go and fix it, which is the solution. And you have to depend on a lot of tools and utilities. On this screen, there is a list of native tools in SQL Server, and 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 this is not uh, this is uh, something very well known to you. Day in day out, you are working with DMVs and execution plans and extended events, and nowadays even SQL Profiler, etc. So this slide just talked about that. And of course, there are certain. Uh, uh, tools, third-party community tools as well, which are freely available on the internet and you can always use them as well. Uh, here, we are not talking about paid tools at all. Now, in part one, I took this as an example. Okay, so I, we talked about uh, the different things, different performance issues that you're facing with SQL Server. Let's take one of the example. Let's say your query is running slow. How can you approach this problem? How can you simplify this issue? What's happening with my query? A lot of things could happen with your query. Uh, report does not run. You're not getting the output. It's hung. I am waiting. Query times out. SQL Server sucks. These are all different symptoms. End of the day, your query is not running slow. So what is really happening with your query? Again, just try to simplif simplify it. Either your query is running or it is waiting. We all know, you and I know that the SQL Server thread, the session, that process uh, could have different states like sleeping, suspended, running and whatnot. But then that's the super technical part of things. But when you think about simplifying uh, a, a performance issue, your thread, the, the, the query that you have sent to SQL Server, you can just think about it that either it is running or it is waiting. And I took this as an example in that first demo. And today we are extending that demo and we'll try to make it a little more complicated, which is like taking it one step further. So how do I know what's happening? Query is either running or it is waiting. Then you have to depend on certain tools to figure out what's going on with your query. Dynamic management views, extended events, and execution plans. These are the kind of go-to tools we will depend on. What can you do after you know what is happening? Well, simply go and take corrective action. All right, so let me quickly show you the demo that I did that I did in uh, in part one. And here is a very, very simple demo. Okay, so let's use AdventureWorks 2016. I hope all of you can see the screen. We are now on with Management Studio. Okay, so if we say select star from sales dot sales person, and if you execute, let's turn on the actual execution plan. Can you all see the screen? Management Studio, a few yes may help in the chat window. Okay, cool. That's good enough. So let's turn on the actual execution plan. Let's go and execute this. Okay. 
And now what you can see, as many times I run this query, it runs absolutely fine. No issues. The output comes in about two seconds or so. Not even two seconds. It's, oh, what did, what did we do? Select star from... Okay, let's do one thing. Let's, I was just surprised with the, with the output here. Okay, let's do. Sales door. No. Me and my tables. Okay, no, sorry, I got that. Okay, this was. I was thinking, why are we getting less number of data? Okay, so we are in AdventureWorks 2016 and we were playing around with says person dot person. All right, so we were getting this output in about two seconds, about 20,000 records. And as many times you run this workload, everything looks all good. Then what I did was I pulled out another new query here. And then those who attended last uh, week's webinar, which is part one, what I did was I turned off screen sharing. So let me turn off screen sharing now because I'm going to make a small change. So I will just go and do a stop share. Okay, I've shared. Because in this window, I'm trying to write a small quote, which I'm going to show you. And uh, so just let me punch this down to make this query run slow. Okay. We are just done in a moment. Okay. So let me share the screen again. And there you go. All right. So I am, those who attended last week's webinar part one, uh, please don't reveal the answer. Something is going on in this window. I've done something. Now, when I go and run this query, what happens is this query is now not giving you the output in that two seconds that you expect. So this query has its benchmark, which is like two second response time. But now it has, it's taking more than 10 seconds, 15 seconds and whatnot. And the output is still not coming. This is exactly what business users face day in, day out when there are performance issues with SQL Server. We are doing this with Management Studio. They kind of get similar uh, yeah, issues from the application side. Okay, I have, someone is complaining about screen share not working. Is Are you able to see the screen? I just shared this again. Okay, perfect. Okay, now, okay, this is a question for people who are just attending part two. What do you think is going on? What did I do exactly? What did I do exactly? Okay. So those who attended part one, please don't answer because it's important that you start thinking. Okay. Someone is talking about blocking, locking, uncommitted transaction. All of you, most of you are spot on. I did a very, very straightforward thing just to show you this, which is I created a transaction. I opened a transaction, which is uncommitted, right? There's no rollback or commit. So this is an in-flight transaction and I was changing some data which means this user is holding an exclusive lock on one of the records where business entity ID is one. And this user is asking for all the data. It can actually read all the data, but that one record, which is being exclusively logged. Okay, now what I am going to do is let's roll this back. Okay, the moment you roll this back, this query is going to go through. Okay, there you go. Now the question is, how do you know and how do you troubleshoot? Why did this query take so much time? So if you see this query waited for about two minutes, one minute, 59 seconds to be precise, and you want to troubleshoot, why did it run slow? Now we all know, okay, I just engineered something and created a blocking scenario, but technically you want to figure out what went wrong. Okay, all of you, where is the answer? Part one, folks, 
maybe you can hold off your nerves hold on to your nerves don't answer those who are attending part 2 what can i do where can i really see this can i can i just go back into the history or anything like that and understand 2 minutes where did this simple query took 2 minutes okay some responses are, are coming which is good activity monitor sp who is active extended events sp who to sp who a lot of these options are available now you know that many of these options will can be used from a real time monitoring perspective and 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 which is fine which is true we are running a demo here so i have done something already which is uh, which is what i did i turned on the actual execution plan because i want to keep this simple if the actual execution plan was turned on or you can depend on the execution plan now the execution plan will show you the weight statistics for this query for the workloads that you're running in ssms so if i jump over to the execution plan and i select the select operator and right click and go to properties you have the weight stats here on the right side as you can see and you can clearly see lckms weight type encounter uh, encountered here which is lock mode shared and the wait time in milliseconds so it it just waited those uh, many seconds so um, quite easily traceable quite easily identifiable etc etc now i know what you're thinking you are thinking that oh amit you turned on the actual execution plan so you were able to see but then in in real world when so many workloads are hitting sql server we are not sitting with the actual execution plans all the time and these workloads are not being fired from ssms they are being fired from the application well this is where you have your monitoring tools right the native tools or the third party tools which are capturing lot of stuff in and out we will come to that in a moment but what we are trying to do right now is simplify this complex subject why did i choose this as a very basic example go back to the ppt in the powerpoint we explained we talked about there there are two things that are happening with your with your query either it is running or it is waiting and if it is waiting on certain resources and you can figure out what it was waiting for then you can decide your you can define your course of action uh, probably half of the problem is already solved when you know what your query was waiting on so i want to again just do a quick recap you're looking at a lot of performance issues with sql server different types of problems different categories general slowness blocking uh, excessive resource utilization and slow running query so we took slow running as a query as a example as an example we try to simplify it either it is running or it is waiting then we try to identify what it is waiting for if you can track if you can capture what your query what that workload was waiting for half of the problem is solved now that i know it is a blocking scenario maybe i can do something about that but the first step here is to find out where is the problem now execution plan and looking into wait stats from the execution plan is something uh, from sql server 2014 or sql server i think sql server 2016 onwards if that was not there let's say if the execution plan was not there then you have your own jobs or scripts capturing information or the best of all you might have extended events running just like profiler and capturing stuff and you can go back into the history and figure out a few things this is what i'm going to do in part 3 this is part 2 where i will show you automated tools so you're just kind of enjoying and setting not really monitoring much on a real time basis right and something goes wrong and how you can go back into the history and figure out what went wrong in the past what went wrong at 9 o'clock in the morning what went wrong last night and things like that okay this demo that we did just now looks very basic right because all of you guessed it and i will tell you credits to all of you even when um, uh, audiences all of you some of you attended part 1 you were easily able to guess what was going wrong but now this methodology that we took right the query is either running or waiting and then you're trying to figure out what it is waiting for which will bring you closer to the performance issue i'm going to take the same methodology i'm going to take the same technique and then show you a complex problem which is going to be today's demonstration
Are you ready, all of you? This is a complex demonstration now. Step two, we are increasing the level now. Are you all ready for the demo? Let's do it. If you want to watch the remainder part of the webinar and all the remaining demos, you can subscribe to the webinar on sqlmaestros.com and get lifetime access to the recorded webinar. All you have to do is just go to sqlmaestros.com, click on the recorded webinar section and get access to all the webinar recordings. There are many of them. Some of these webinars are free and some of them are very nominally priced. So the ones that you're interested in, you can subscribe to them and get lifetime access. Now, because there are so many webinars, subscribing to each webinar might be a bit cumbersome. So we have another option, which is SQL Maestro's membership. So the first link on SQL Maestro says join. If you click on that, it will bring you to SQL Maestro's membership. Things are very simple. There are two membership levels. The first level is free, where you get access to all the free webinars and all our tutorials and demos, more than 200, 300 demos and tutorials. All you have to do is just become a free member. You're paying nothing and you get access to all of them. So you don't have to go and subscribe to each webinar individually. Just become a free member and then explore the free video lobby. So if you go to the video lobby here, there is something called as free content where you get access to all of that. But then all of us are interested in advanced content, isn't it? And that is where premium membership comes into play. So the webinars that are paid and there are many advanced tutorials and demos. If you want access to all of them, you can become a premium member and pay a nominal price, which is annual membership. Once you do that, you can explore the premium video lobby. If you go to the premium video lobby from here or just go to the video lobby and click on premium content, you can see all the paid webinars and all the advanced tutorials and demos and access get access to all of them uh, with your annual membership. Anyway, choice is yours. There's a lot of content on sqlmaestros.com and you can also explore the YouTube membership level as well. So you, you have free content on YouTube channel and you can also join and become a member of SQL Maestros on YouTube where you can pay a monthly fee, get access to all the paid webinars and advanced content. So in summary, you can go to sqlmaestros.com and become a member or you can become a member on YouTube also. Becoming a member on sqlmaestros.com turns out to be a little cost effective with the annual membership in comparison to YouTube monthly membership. But anyway, choice is yours, whichever platform you wish to use. Happy SQL.